I've been a Windows user all my life. My first PC was a Compaq Presario back in the 90s. I've been on Windows ever since, uh, except for a very short per period that I worked on uh, Mac, Power Mac, G3 kind of era. Um, but recently I got a MacBook Air and I'm keeping it. If you're a Windows user and you're tempted by the Apple Silicon machines, uh, then this video might give you a pretty good idea of what your first impressions are going to be. I've got a lot of notes. I've been using this for about two weeks now. Uh, and there's tons of stuff that I like, tons of stuff that I didn't like, and that's going to take some time getting used to. So stick with me and uh, let's look at the MacBook Air M2. So first off, uh, about the issues with my Surface Pro, um, there's a few things that have been bothering me about it. Uh, while I generally love the device, uh, I have the Surface Pro 8 with the i5 uh, processor, 16 gigs of RAM. So it's kind of a mid-range, upper mid-range, I would say, uh, spec model. Uh, and uh, it's a beautiful machine. Uh, it's been working great except uh, for a few issues. So the battery life is not great. And also it still has that hibernation issue where a lot of times it just comes out of the uh, bag dead. So it's warm, it's completely depleted uh, and it comes out of the bag and with no battery and I just, for a, a laptop, that's just unacceptable. Uh, and I know this is a known issue and there's ways around it uh, and the biggest factor is if you put it to sleep with the charger still plugged in, it will stay in that kind of half awake mode where it can still run like maintenance tasks and updates while it's actually hibernating. Um, but that's just something you forget about. Uh, and it's just been dead more times than I like. And even though this is my personal machine and not my work machine, this has been bugging me. Um, the other thing is that uh, I have shifted a little bit in what I do with my computer, so I don't draw on this anymore. So I don't need the pen uh, functionality as much as I used to. And uh, I've been uh, editing a fair bit of video on it, uh, and it, the performance is not quite there when it comes to video. Uh, and that is something that tempted me about the Apple Silicon uh, computers because they have hardware video decoders on the chips and uh, that has been hyped to boost performance in video editing uh, software quite a bit. So it's, it's very much a, a change in what I do with my computer that's prompted me to try this out. Uh, and also, I guess, with age, uh, brand loyalty has gone down quite a bit uh, and I don't really stick with Microsoft just for the heck of it, uh, like I might have done in the past. I still daily my uh, Surface Duo 2 though, and I really, really stick with this device because it's just so unlike uh, anything else. Uh, and the aspect ratio is great. The two screens are just uh, amazing to work with. Uh, so I really enjoy using this and I have been, and I will until it dies. So the MacBook Air, uh, this is the first design of MacBook Air that I truly liked. Um, the kind of more squared off edges, the more straighter lines uh, that they did with the M2 series and onwards really fits my aesthetic uh, quite a bit more than uh, the previous kind of wedge shaped and, and rounded off uh, design. Um, so. I was really, really interested when these came out, but of course my image of uh, Apple computers, is, one is Apple software, uh, which I don't tend to like uh, because it's a little more handholdy than I, I like uh, my software to be. Uh, and also they have that image of being overpriced. When I got more and more tempted and I looked up the prices for this device, uh, for this spe specific model uh, with the M2 chip, 
uh, with uh, 16 gigs of RAM with uh, 512 uh, gigs of uh, storage. It wasn't actually that bad. Uh, it's a fair bit cheaper than what I actually paid for my Surface, which is okay. I mean, this is uh, going on two years old by, by now, but it was in the ballpark that I actually uh, felt it was okay to, to get one to try it out. So let's go over a th few things that I like and don't like about the hardware of this device. So I do like the overall uh, chassis and, and kind of overall design. I do not like uh, the keyboard. The keyboard, uh, the travel is okay. It's kind of a little shallow for my taste. The, the Surface has a little more tra um, tactability and uh, travel. And also the Surface keys are a little less uh, slippery. So they, they have a little more tack to them uh, and they don't wear as much. I got this uh, M2 MacBook Air used and there's already, after a year and, and spare uh, of use, um, there's a little of that, that kind of, uh, that slippery wear uh, that you get on laptop keyboards a lot. Now I did get uh, the midnight finish, um, which is, by now notorious for wear and it does have a few scuffs here and there it doesn't bother me too much uh, but it's definitely very easy to wear apparently uh, the surface pro on the other hand has held up really well i've been using for this for over two years now uh, and uh, i don't see any any scratches or anywhere uh, anywhere on the device um, the keyboard has held up uh, a quick quite a bit better uh, than this keyboard uh, came um, from the previous owner. I don't know how much they used it, obviously, um, but yeah, it has a fair bit of use. Uh, it also has that notch in the, the screen, which you can ignore, but sometimes when you are going into the top menu, you, it's, you notice it. You don't stop noticing this. And uh, yeah, I mean, you do get a little more screen real estate because they didn't have to put the uh, cameras and sensors in a bezel. Um, but personally, I would have liked a bezel a little bit more. I'm not a, an opponent of uh, bezels in devices. Another thing is that the edges are, uh, while I like the squared off uh, aesthetic, the edges are very sharp. Um, so specifically, this little cutout uh, that you have for lifting up the screen, um, the edges of that are super pointy. I don't know why they kept it this pointy. Um, I mean, would have given it a little bit of a chamfer. Seriously, this is, and I can't stop touching it. I can't stop poking myself with this thing. Also, this thing, because it's a metal chassis, it gets super cold. So if you have your pal palms resting uh, on the palm rest area here, this is super cold uh, when it's winter time like it is right now. Um, this is really cold. Another thing that I noticed uh, that was interesting to me is the MagSafe connector. Um, that is, of course, I, I appreciate MagSafe. That's very cool, um, but it's actually stronger than I thought. It's a really strong magnet, uh, which is surprising to me. And uh, if you try to pull it out, it won't come out very easily. So it's kind of, it's easier to angle it out. Um, so that was kind of, it's not a negative. Uh, it's probably rather a positive, but it's, it was something that was uh, surprising to me. Uh, one thing that I really don't like is that it doesn't have touch screen. So while I don't really use uh, my Surface Pro in touch screen, on all touch screen um, kind of tablet mode that much, it kind of has gotten uh, to a point where it's kind of a reflex to just hit the OK button or uh, like quick action buttons with my finger rather than scrolling up with the mouse and uh, having to touch that. So that's a step backwards for sure. Another thing, and this is just a, a general laptop versus surface form, form factor device. It takes up less space in the back because you don't have the kickstand, but then because the keyboard is always to the front, it takes up more space in the front. And I frequently use my devices uh, to watch 
things, movies and, and stuff while I have something in front of it. Uh, while, for example, I'm eating lunch or, or like uh, I'm snacking or I have uh, like a notebook in front of it and I'm, I'm doing something. And uh, with this, you just don't have the space in front. But with the, without the kickstand, it's easier to use on like smaller tables, like in planes, train rides, um, little restaurant tables, stuff like that. So it's this is a standard debate as old as, as the Surface line. Um, the Surface devices are great because you can just fold the keyboard back or just lose it all together. Just use it as a tablet, uh, as a standalone and uh, it takes up way less space on the table like that. Um, so that is something that I'm definitely gonna miss. And also, of course, the pen functionality, while I mentioned that I don't use it as much anymore, uh, I do use it from time to time, um, so I'm gonna miss that for sure. Now, let's talk about the OS. My last experience with Mac OS was like OS 8, maybe, uh, so, it's definitely quite a while ago, um, but there's definitely stuff that I recognize in this OS. So I probably have a little bit easier uh, time adjusting uh, to all the quirks and, and like different ways of doing stuff uh, that than uh, a completely blank slate user that has only ever used uh, Windows PCs. Um, but here's some things that I noticed. One is Switching over muscle memory, like keyboard short, shortcuts and just uh, the placement of the buttons has been super jarring. <laughs> this has taken so long and I still hit the very oddly placed uh, caps lock key all the time when I mean, mean to uh, hit the control or command key. Um, so just uh, control C, control V is something that you do all the time on a PC when you're using it uh, on for daily use. And this is just something that is in an odd position here. So you have to go to the third button from the bottom left uh, and not the first one. And this just takes a long time um, to get used to. Uh, the other thing that is, is that one of the uh, function buttons, the actual function or uh, globe key, I don't know why it's the globe key, somebody tell me, um, but like the function key uh, that, for example, you need for the emoji keyboard um, is on the right side. So uh, you kind of have to remember, and it always takes me a long time to remember uh, the shortcuts for stuff like the emoji keyboard uh, screenshots. Uh, so yeah, I miss uh, having all the, the function keys on the left side. One thing that I was positively uh, surprised with Mac OS uh, was that it's actually much more customizable than I remembered uh, or that my, my image of was. And I think that's kind of tainted by iOS because iOS is a little more handholdy. And while this is definitely handholdy and I will get to that, um, it's actually more customizable than I uh, expected. So, for example, um, the dock, I hated the dock uh, in the way that it came out of the box. Um, you have these big icons on the bottom, which would be the taskbar and the start menu. And uh, they're just too big. They jump around when you open something and when, you, when it gives you uh, notifications. And, and like uh, when you have multiple windows or multiple items in one thing, like uh, the download folder, they come out in like a, this arc and they're just tilted, uh, which I hate. And overall, um, it's got a lot more skeuomorphism than uh, I expected by now. Uh, so it's a little more like 3 da uh, a little uh, more gradients and, and more like uh, things looking closer to their real world uh, counterparts than you would get in current Windows. UI. Uh, but uh, there is a fair bit of customization um, that you can enable. So for example, uh, something that I noticed right out of the, the box uh, is that the trackpad works differently uh, than on Windows. Uh, so I do like the trackpad. It's a, it's a fairly big uh, area. 
uh, and it has that, um, I, I guess this is the, the force touch uh, kind of uh, functionality uh, where it gives you the uh, tactability of having actual clicks on there without having any buttons. And of course the Surface uh, Pro um, trackpad has that annoying, really, really loud click, which I don't appreciate. This is the only thing that bothers me about the Surface Pro uh, keyboard. Uh, while it's otherwise great, it's uh, tactile, it has a little more grippiness to the keys and to the surfaces, and it doesn't get as cold. Uh, and it's a overall a really nice keyboard. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's nice about the trackpad. And uh, when you first try out the trackpad, um, when you have been using uh, Windows, then uh, you're probably used to just lightly tapping on the trackpad and out of the box in macOS that doesn't work. But there is uh, an option if you go into system preferences and you look for the uh, mouse and trackpad uh, options, then you can enable that. And uh, you have all the usual settings like, uh, like uh, pointer speed and all that uh, and uh, scroll direction um, and stuff like that. Uh, what I noticed about the scroll direction is that it's the same for a mouse and the trackpad, which is stupid because on uh, the trackpad, you're used to kind of like moving paper around with your fingers. Uh, so it's, it's uh, intuitive to, for it to go up when you pull it down. Uh, but on mouses, um, the scroll wheel generally works the other way around. Um, so having that as the same setting is kind of jarring. So when I do use a mouse, it's kind of, my head is confused. Um, yeah, and another thing uh, that I had to customize right out of the box was the Bluetooth setting. Uh, there's no Bluetooth indicator in uh, the control center. Um, so the area up top uh, where your quick settings are, that's called control center on Mac OS. And there's no uh, Bluetooth indicator in there by default. So you have to add it, but you can add it, uh, which is good. Um, what I did notice about the Bluetooth functionality is uh, once you have that in there, you just open it up, uh, you click on your device, uh, which is in range and you just connect. And it's, uh, it doesn't go to that device by default like Windows does. Uh, so my, my Surface Pro, when I have uh, Bluetooth on, uh, it often takes over my headphones, even though I'm listening to something on my phone. And that's been uh, something that's irked me. And uh, I really do appreciate that Mac OS doesn't do that. Uh, another thing is that a few things that are missing from the OS compared to Windows. Uh, for example, Windows Snap, this should be standard on any OS uh, by now. Um, so in Windows, when you pull a window to the top, uh, it maximizes. If you pull it to the, le the right, it takes up half the screen on the right. And you, then you can just, you can snap it with uh, the Windows key and, and uh, arrow keys. You can uh, select different layouts um, from an area on the screen and, and stuff like that. And it's just very functional if you're multitasking and you have to, you want to have multiple things up uh, at the same time. And also the maximizing thing I use that all the time. And uh, I just, I kept doing that and it didn't do anything on, on Mac OS and it was just weird. Uh, so I had to get an additional app to do that. The one that I use is called Better Snap Tool. Uh, and apparently it was uh, previously uh, called Better Touch Tool, uh, but it's the same thing. Uh, and yeah, it works really well. Uh, and then of course uh, you have the uh, three uh, window icons. Uh, so close window, minimize window, maximize window. Uh, and those are on the left side uh, rather than the right side on Windows. So this is kind of a trend stuff tends to be on the, on the other side of the screen um, for some reason. Um, so it's something that you have to get used to. Uh, overall, I feel like this uh, OS compared to Windows is a lot closer to mobile. Um, so you have that dock on the bottom, uh, which obviously is the same kind of thing that you have in iOS and Android. Um, and then you have uh, something that is called Launchpad 
uh, which is your app drawer basically. And this is where all your apps go. This is fairly intuitive. Um, if you're using any mobile device, you will feel right at home and I, I do like this. Um, what I didn't like is I couldn't find some of my folders in Finder <laughs> because by default, uh, it has a very limited, if you open a new window in Finder, it has a very limited uh, set of locations in the uh, left-hand bar. Uh, and for example, pictures wasn't included. So I took some pictures with my camera te tethered uh, to the MacBook and I couldn't get to them because they're in the pictures folders and there was no icon for the pictures folders or even my, my hard drive anywhere in finder it wasn't on the desktop and i do remember in os 8 it was it would show up on the desktop um, so you would have your hard drive and any uh like usb drives that you have plugged in they would come on automatically on the desktop and i'm sure you can enable that or create uh, links or, or shortcuts or whatever i'm just talking about out of the box um, so i had to actually go into the sony app and then uh open the location from there to finally find my folder that has my pictures. And then I could drag it onto the kind of favorites bar uh, that you have on your left hand of uh, the finder window. And I've done this also for obviously my HD because I need my root directory. I mean, this is where my stuff is, right? And uh, in, in your root directory, you have your applications, library system and users, which is it was basically my computer in uh, Windows. So this kind of trend of like hiding stuff from you, um, being very handholdy, this is something that I really uh, associate with Apple software, um, which has prevented me from getting stuff like iPads and, and iPhones uh, from the very early days. Now I have uh, owned, uh, the iPhone 3G and 3GS back in the day. And uh, I, I did own a uh, iPad mini for like half a year in 2019, I believe. Um, and that was one of the big things that turned me off of it. Uh, the hiddenness of the file system and uh, the inability to do stuff my way. But as I said, uh, macOS has so far been more customizable than I'm used to and uh, do do like that. So if anyone knows where the up key is, just to go to the parent directory, um, let me know because this is driving me nuts. Another thing that I felt was missing uh, from macOS is a clipboard history. Uh, this is something that you get in Windows uh, with the Windows key and V, so the paste key. Uh, and uh, you, it just gives you a, a, a history of all the things that you have recently pasted, whether it be uh, text or Excel uh, cells in their formatting um, or images or whatever. Um, this is really handy. Uh, it's uh, something that I use all the time because sometimes you just, you select something else and forget that you had something in the clipboard and then it's gone uh, or you, paste the wrong thing, you paste over something and you want to go back and yeah, stuff like that. Um, the Windows uh, clipboard history is super handy for uh, and I really miss that. Uh, so that's probably something that I want to, I'm going to have to uh, get another app for. I've seen, seen something uh, that's called paste uh, that's uh, supposed to do the same thing. If you have any uh, suggestions on good apps to do that, uh, let me know. And then the most important thing, the thing why I got this device, um, the performance, uh, specifically when it comes to video and photo editing. Um, so I have mostly used uh, Lightroom, Photoshop, uh, and uh, DaVinci Resolve on this machine and some Illustrator. Uh, and I did some uh, focus stacking uh, from Lightroom into Photoshop. I did some photo conversions with uh, Negative Lab uh, Pro for my negatives. Uh, and I did some video editing for this channel. 
And across the board, if the rumors were true, uh, the performance on this compared to my uh, Surface Pro night and day. Uh, my Surface Pro often struggles uh, with getting the data ready in Lightroom. It would frequently slow down while I'm editing stuff. Uh, it couldn't play um, 4K uh, footage smoothly. And just, yeah, overall, um, this stuff, I'm really, really satisfied with how the MacBook is performing so far. Uh, and I'm keeping it because this is what I do with my computer these days. And I'm sure that the next generation uh, of uh, Intel processors or AMD processors or whatever that are coming out with now is gonna be better, uh, but the i5 doesn't cut it. And uh, there's some other stuff that I feel that the uh, Surface Pro is underpowered uh, in for example, uh, the battery life, for example, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections uh, aren't as strong as this is and as I'm sure other more balanced uh, Windows PCs are. And of course, you do have to factor in that this is all contained in this little tablet here. So I do recognize that they had a little less uh, space to work with. Um, but this is actually feels thinner um, than uh, my Surface Pro with the keyboard cover on. Uh, it's pretty much exactly the same weight and for what I do right now, it's more suited. So yeah, I'm gonna miss the uh, tablet functionality. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna miss having it be more compact on the table. Uh, and uh, there's a few other things that I miss. There's the freedom of uh, Windows because you are really free to customize everything and mess up stuff if you are inclined to do so. And uh, yeah, uh, the, just the fact that I have to log in with like two or three different methods just to install an app on this. And it's asking me if I want to permit an app to access a folder that I just hit the open key to access. And that kind of stuff is just really mind-numbingly annoying on Mac OS. So I'm definitely gonna miss uh, Windows in that aspect of just it treating me more like an adult. Oh, and something else uh, that I'm going to miss is the uh, Android phone integration with this device. Um, on Windows, you have uh, an app that's called Phone Link or, uh, or Link to Windows on the Android device uh, and paired with my Surface Duo. Uh, and uh, as far as I know, also Samsung devices, it gives you a lot of access into your device. You can actually mirror the screen really easily. You can access any of the notifications, any of the files on the device or, or like the photos uh, on the device or uh, any of the apps installed on the device and super, super handy. Uh, I fortunately do have a Windows PC at work. Uh, so I'm going to be able to access that from work, uh, which is 90% of the time that I access it anyways. Uh, so I'm good in that respect. Uh, but that's gonna, something that I'm going to miss. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, performance wise, this is night and day. And uh, I do really like the design language of uh, the current uh, MacBooks. And uh, yeah, so far, I'm happy with it. I'm sure there's gonna be issues I'd run into, uh, but so far it's doing great. So that's uh, about it for my uh, honest first impressions after two and a half weeks of using this MacBook Air. It is the M2 version with uh, 512 gigs of uh, memory, 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, the 10 core graphics processor. And yeah, let me know in the in the comments. Have you made the same kind of switch? Are you interested in making this switch? Have you used any Windows devices um, that are kind of in this sleek, uh, thin, and uh, surprisingly affordable kind of form factor that you could recommend to me that I might be interested in trying out? Anything, just throw it in the comments. I always love getting comments. I, I love having a conversation about this stuff because this is kind of my passion. I just make these videos for fun and I do appreciate when people interact with them. 
And with that, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.